In this video, I'm going to show you how to put a bubbly background on an image that you've already created. I'm starting with a marker print that I made a while ago by putting the design into styrofoam, coloring with marker, and then printing it on this piece of paper. And I'm going to cover the print up with this uh, masking fluid so that the bubbling that I do won't actually interfere with the print itself and I'm going to be tapping this on. Normally I would spread it on like I'm painting with a brush so I'm not using quite so much of it because you don't really need to but because my marker was a water soluble marker if I were to do that it would smear the fish and I would lose the image so I have to use a little bit more of the masking fluid and dab it on instead in order to completely cover it up. So I'm just going to cover the whole thing up and that way when I do the bubbling layer it will not interfere with the colors of the fish itself. While my masking fluid is drying, I'm going to mix up some paints that I'm going to apply using uh, bubbles blown through a straw. And the way I do this, it's just about a quarter size bit of Dawn dish detergent. Not sure if Dawn is something you really have to use, but it's what I learned to use um, in art class. And then I'm going to put just enough water to kind of cover it, get some water in there. It's probably about a quarter to a half an inch of water. And then I'm using Turner acrylic gouache, acryl gouache. Uh, you can also use tube watercolors. Uh, they work as well, but I like gouache. I think the colors are just a little bit more intense and I like that. And once you have that, you, know, you can use your straw or just a stir stick. And I'm going to mix up my paint, like so. This is a, these are large plastic straws that I bought to go with our water bottles. You can use paper straws or grocery store straws, whatever you have on hand. These are a little bit big, so they make the bubbles really big. If you use a smaller straw, you'll get some smaller bubbles when you blow your bubbles, which is kind of cool. Okay, what I'm doing is, you can see these bubbles here. I'm actually literally blowing into this. And if you're working with children, be sure to emphasize blow the bubbles, don't suck in the straw because the paint doesn't taste very good. And I'm going to let those bubbles soak in and eventually pop. Okay, this one is a second layer. I used the darker green and blew some bubbles to go over the lighter green. Now those are going to be popping and leaving their marks. Okay, so I have a light green layer underneath and then I added the dark green layer on top. And my final layer is going to be a mixture with a blue. So I'll blow some bubbles. And push those into place. Wow, that's a nice big one. Getting some huge bubbles. little bitty ones right there along the edge and I'm going to let all those little bubbles work their way in. Okay, now that everything is dry, the last step is to gently roll off the masking fluid. And the easiest way to do that is just to sort of, just kind of rub at a corner or an edge, and it will begin to roll off. 
just like so. And you wanna just take your time so that you don't tear the paper. And it just slowly rolls off. And it will, underneath, you'll see, just carefully pull it off, and underneath will be the image that you had covered up. And it will be lightened a little bit. It does lose some of its color, but that's not really a problem because I'm going to go through at the end, and I'm going to go through with some watercolors I can go through with watercolors, markers. Um, I may use watercolor pencil on this one to give it some detailing. I'm just going to pull, but you can see that it's pulling off some of the paper there. So I'm gonna go back and kind of get that paper back in place. Sometimes rolling it is a little better than pulling it. There's another place where my paper is sticking a bit. So I'm gonna go through, and that's just going to require a little bit of touch up with my watercolors. Uh, probably watercolors or watercolor pencil will likely be how I'll do my touching up so that I can get these colors back into place. So I'll need to put a little bit of glue underneath there, and then I'll just, the masking fluid kind of pulled too much color away. So I'll put that all back. These are uh, Derwent ink tent, oh, Derwent ink tents watercolor pencils. So these will work nicely. I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of extra color, and then I'll be able to take a damp paintbrush and blend that color in. And just brush and some plain water and activate the pencils.
after the gouache painted fish dried, I decided that the orange color was just too dull compared to the gouache colors that I had used on the fish itself. So I did go in and I put a thin down layer of gouache, I added water to thin it down. So it's still going to have the textures showing through those little bits of brown. And I had these little areas, I couldn't decide whether to paint them blue uh, to match the water or orange to match the fish. And I went with orange to match the fish. Not sure if I like them, makes it look like he's trying to grow a little beard. But I thought, hey, they're here and they're staying. So there's the modified gouache painted fish print. For this one, I'm going to use some soft pastel pencils. Found these at uh, probably at Michaels or probably Michaels or AC Moore would be most likely where I would have gotten these. And rather than using paint, I'm going to intensify the colors using just these really nice soft chalk pastels. So it'll be a different effect, but it will still deepen those colors. Here and be able to bring out those nice oranges and yellows and blues. One thing when you're using chalks or chalk pastels, you can just tap. You don't want to rub with your hand and brush across it because that's a real good way to really mess it up. This little fish print didn't have as much bubbling in the background. For this one, I only used two colors. I used the light green and the blue. At the time I did this one, I didn't have the darker green mixed up. So I only used those two colors. And what I like about the chalk, as opposed to the paints, is that the chalk pastels keep a lot of that nice texture that you have in something like this. So I kind of like that in that look. And I even have a white so that I can bring out the eye a little bit more. Clean that up. This fish also preserved more of its detail when I did the print. It was a better, slightly better print that I had to work with and that does help too. This green is the lighter, more of a yellowy green. So it is a slightly different green than the green that I had used when I made the marker print. So what I'm going to do is put this lighter green colored pencil or colored chalk on here. And then I have a darker green that I can blend in with it so that it stands out against the background a little bit better. And I'm not worried about coloring over every bit of it, just adding some nice color. Fish. And there you have it. Another bubbled fish. Thanks for stopping by, and I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial. If you'd like to learn more about how I created the fish prints used in this demonstration, use the link posted below this video to visit my Skillshare class, Print with Markers. You'll be invited to, to test out the Skillshare community website with a two-month trial subscription, which will get you access not only to my classes, but to hundreds of other classes from a variety of different Skillshare teachers. 
And if you prefer to try before you buy, so to speak, you can see a preview of Print with Markers along with all my other Skillshare classes and some free tutorials on my YouTube channel. Just visit YouTube Seabogs Art and you'll find me there or check out my website, seabogsart.com, for some direct links. Hope to see you soon.